Welcome to Wisdom Exchange TV. We're in Ottawa, Canada, with Her Excellency Nuza Chakroni, the ambassador of His Majesty the King of Morocco. If you were to attribute your success to one thing, be it an attitude, a person, a situation, what would that be? When you both trust you, this is something to motivate you to succeed because you have no other way, because you can't deceive them. It was very, very important for me. That is such an extremely powerful statement. I mean, if, uh, you know, if everyone could give trust to their employees, not, not everyone earns it, but if you can, you know, that would uh, get people motivated to, to work for you. Very, very, very powerful. What is the, the biggest challenge that you've had in your career to date that you had to overcome? Uh, when I said uh, earlier that uh, the Constitution stipulates now the parity, I feel myself I have to continue to uh, support every action, every woman, every man will contribute to achieve those goals. Now, have you ever implemented a project or an initiative or um, led a campaign that just did not work? Oh, yes, of course. Can you share one with us and, oh, and, yes. and then tell us what you would do differently today? Yes, I was candidate uh, three times before I, uh, I won the elections. So, uh, two times. I was candidate at the municipal uh, level. And it was, uh, the first time it was in 1987. And uh, when I was uh, doing my uh, electoral campaign, I remember the first door I knocked. And a uh, man uh, who opened the, the door, he said, who, who are you? I said, I'm uh, the candidate, I will represent you in the municipality. And he just looked to me and said, you? Okay, men couldn't do what we want to do. So how about women, you know, who was young? And he said, okay, thank you. And he uh, closed the door. I mean, it was, you know, just, uh, are you uh, just, uh, is it a joke? Uh, for him it was like a joke. Who I am that I can just go and represent a population as a woman, as a young, it was impossible for him to, it was impossible at that time to figure out how women uh, could be elected. Uh, the second time it was, uh, um, yes, hard to, but people were more open to dialogue, to know what is your program, yeah, and it was, yeah, we can believe you, but you know, not uh, enough uh, mature to, had this experience. The third time I was uh, a candidate for the legislative, for the parliament. At that time it was just wonderful. Because my company was, I, I was, you know, just uh, uh, mature and uh, my, uh, my speech was very strong and I had to face uh, many, many challenges. Even I failed, even. But it was for me just a success. Why? Because my message goes everywhere, went everywhere. I could dialogue with women, with men in a rural area as well as in the um, uh, city, uh, everywhere with the um, women, with men, with the old people, with young people. Uh, people were very open on my speech and it was not impossible for me and I was, uh, we were maybe 36 uh, candidates, I was the third, uh, the third one in the, the rank. So it was for me uh, very, very good uh, what I achieved. So I think since 1987 to today, a very, very impressive change. It does. It sounds like you wouldn't do anything different though, because each time you ran and, and did not win. Then when I failed, yes, I never lost confidence. Yeah. When you know, it's unbelievable, but. Uh, the day they announced uh, the result of the ballot, they say, okay, first, the only candidate who won. 
the only reaction I had, the same, every time, the same reaction that I will run again, again. I will do it again. I will win it next time. Where did that confidence come from? Um, life is not easy and it is challenging you. And when it is too easy, you cannot go very far. When it is hard, you learn from your failure, you learn from everything, and it, give, it makes you more stronger. The first time it's hard to say, no, I, you, you can just behave like that and say, no, no, no way, it's not my job. It's easy also to say that, but it's harder to say, even if it is hard, I will continue but I will do it differently. This is, uh, this is important. If you were to give advice to other women, or men for that matter, about how to lead in politics, or how to lead a project, or a company, or initiative, any pieces of leadership advice, if you had three, what would those be? The first one I will say, you have to take in account how others uh, are Oh, what, what are their expectations? Of course you can come and have a project, but you should take in account the expectations of others because you are here to make things possible for the community, not only for you. This is very important. Second, dialogue. You have to dialogue to put everybody supporting you. You don't have, I think, uh, to come and to say, I want to do this thing, and you have to support. No. I think you have to just try to make people come in and bring in what you are aiming to do. You can just say, what about, uh, I heard something, I, I, I've seen like an area which needs something, what do you think it is possible to do? Are you so you can just dialogue with others to bring them coming steadily to your idea. Then they can feel that the idea is not yours. It's, uh, it's our, it's their, their, uh, also uh, uh, their idea. Uh, so when they, it's uh, uh, when they, they feel that this idea is like their property, they will be really completely uh, involved in it. And the third and the last one, to achieve something, you have not to make big uh, notice uh, I'm going to do and you know an announcement. Not just go and say influent, influent personalities that they can really help you and make your project growing and achieving without too much. Uh, <laughs> Very well said. I talked to you earlier about the edginess segment, and um, this is something that you've had to do that makes you uncomfortable, but you have to continue to do that in order to achieve the success that you've achieved. What is something that you have been really uncomfortable doing, but you needed to, to do to be successful? Sometimes, you know, when, when you are young, you have such ideas just to you can't, can't move. You have, uh, you believe in some things. It's like that it's sharp. But when you live in politics, in society, you just learn that it's never white and black. It's something you have uh, uh, convictions, but sometimes society is not uh, at the same. Uh, uh, connection about what you are doing, so you have to just become flexible. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I had to be just flexible, you know, to say, I will sacrifice something just to achieve maybe not 100%, but maybe 50%. The other one that you mentioned in your edginess that I think is really important to mention is coming from Morocco to Canada. We are very detail-oriented. And in Morocco, you were saying that it's more vague when you're communicating, that we make... Uh, that that's vague, change. maybe we, we go in more general... Big general terms, yeah, thank you. Terms. General terms, you yeah. said. 
but in Canada it's more detailed, so you had to switch how you communicate mm -hmm. to be much more detail oriented. Exactly. Which is a big, that's a change in personality. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why I believe that Canada, I, I learned from Canada, and uh, it's like a add value for me uh, to know that uh, now I know when I have to think about a project, I have to figure out all the details that will uh, could be uh, just uh, like uh, an obstacle in achieving. So I can anticipate and put put all the details and try to deal with all uh, all these uh, small things. Yeah, and that's really important advice for Moroccans or anybody coming to Canada because uh, we are detail oriented. You're absolutely right. What are your words of wisdom for African women? The, the most important that you have something which is essential, crucial. What is crucial, you never, never uh, sacrifice it. You, you can be flexible, but not compromise yourself. It is very, very important. Otherwise, you will lose your uh, essence. Now, I know you have two children. I have a girl and a son. Okay, how old is your, your daughter? 13. 13? 13. 30. Year old. Gosh, you look good. <laughs> okay, so let's say you're 30 year old daughter is 10 years old today. Mm -hmm. With all the knowledge that you now have, what would be your advice to her if she was 10 years old today? Oh, when it comes to your children, it's uh, completely different. Yeah, for, for my, my daughter, uh, I just want to tell uh, her, just listen to your heart and do things how you feel it. I She's think listening to your heart's excellent advice. <laughs> so either way, thank you so, so much thank for your you, insights. Thank you, and, uh, Wow, great perspective. And, and from a Moroccan ambassador, which we really appreciate your time and your insight and your openness and being authentic with us today. So I want to leave with my words of wisdom. And anyone you communicate with, with any culture, learn about them first. What are their expectations of you? That's a great way to start productive partnerships to close cultural gaps. Thank you for joining us on Wisdom Exchange TV.